Hey everyone, welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, today we're going to be doing a tour slash guide of Jurassic difficulty uh, Isla Sorna from the new DLC. The uh, Return to Jurassic Park DLC, so I believe the game calls it 93 uh, Sorna. But uh, first, I want to thank you all so very much for all of the support. Um, we've reached a uh, thousand subscribers uh, about a week ago, um, which is crazy because it honestly took, uh, it seemed to just happen very quickly. Um, I think the game's well, return to popularity with this Jurassic Park DLC certainly has helped. So um, thank you all again very much for all of the support. I've just received word of a new contract. This one is right up your alley. So uh, first, um, as you can see, in case we dip down below it later, we are at five stars. And I will go ahead and show you all the new skins real quick before I uh, get distracted any further. Here is our new Parasaurolophus. This is the 1997 Pattern D. Kind of has a nice aqua coloring to it. I quite like it, to be honest. It's probably my second favorite of the uh, new challenge mode skins after the Nublar T-Rex. And then over here is our, not this one, not this one, but this one, our 1997 Pattern B Stegosaurus. It's kind of got more of a brown-orange color to it. Un unfortunately, probably my kind of tied with the Brachiosaurus one for kind of, uh, okay. I don't, I like the other, the Parasaurolophus and the T-Rex a lot more. But, uh, that's all personal preference, so it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, let's kind of take a breakdown of the tour. This is still Jurassic Difficulty Challenge Mode, so stuff's going to be going wrong in the background. I'm going to be kind of just ignoring it for the time being. Um, so I, as you can see, my all of my facilities are in this center piece of the island, and I have two Jurassic tours that go around the entire island, which is actually pretty cool. It's really neat to see the cars going through these cliffs and whatnot. It's a pretty, it's a very unique island, which is part of the reason why I did not do a let's play because I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, in case you're curious, I will put a screenshot of it up right here. But um, I did beat this in just over eight hours, so I was successful at beating part-time, which is always nice. But anyway, I started off with the visitor center, followed by the arrival helipad and a power station. Um, I took the uh, path that it gives you and give put one full length out this way and the same thing for that way. And then I uh, went straight around the back and then it's another 90 degree turn. This right here as you can see isn't quite perfectly straight because um, I had to connect from here to here so it's not exactly perfect. But uh, these are all 90 degree angles up until about here to connect in the back. And same goes for the front here. 90 degree angle, so the pathing snaps in together. And then this probably also isn't quite perfectly straight connecting from here to here. Just like uh, Isla Nublar. These uh, islands just can't function if we can't keep the people safe. And losing that battle might... Uh, you know, work out for the dinosaurs and their appetites, but for us humans, well, <laughs> not so much. Not so much. Uh, so, as you can see, I've got the same combination as before. The multiverse theory postulates. We've got four we've hotels, um, times, two cafes, two gift shops, a million different two restrooms, so, taking on this new and um, this one um, emergency bunker familiar. actually fills up the entire area 100%, which is really nice. 
Um, we've got our one hatchery tucked in the corner. I did not really have room for a second hatchery, but I really didn't need it, uh, thankfully. We got some weather stations and two ranger outposts for a total of four jeeps, which is extremely crucial. I'll go over that a little later. But so obviously I didn't start off with this many buildings. It was just the visitor center helipad and power station. Then of course in order to get any visibility you need the park tours. So this route right here pretty much has mostly stayed the same the whole time. Um, initially I did not have fences. I did not build fences until about halfway through when I started to need to actually divide the enclosures up so that I could fit more dinosaurs in. Um, I was kind of I thought that maybe because there were no fences that I'd be able to break the rules as far as the um, the population and social requirements go, but it turns out that even if you don't have any fences, if the dinosaurs are uncomfortable because of a too high of a social count, they will have a welfare penalty. So I still had to use fences after a while. But so anyway, I started with this left side of the island, and my first dinosaur was Triceratops, which we've got them. They are now part of a Triceratops, Styracosaurus, and Euoplocephalus uh, paddock over here. And then my second dinosaur was Carithosaurus, I believe, which is now up here in this kind of Hadrosaur small herbivore paddock. Uh, I believe that got us to one star once I had enough of them. My third dinosaur uh, made me have the second park tour that goes down this way. But my third dinosaur was Ceratosaurus, which I originally had in here, but they were eventually replaced by the pair of Spinosauruses in here. Spinosaurus uh, has a comfort of 70, so unless there's an unusually long storm, they do not try to break out. But anyway, for a long time it was Ceratosaurus in here. Uh, let's see, at that point, I believe I also began to add Parasaurolophus to our Hadrosaur paddock and some Gallimimus. And I also believe that I may have added some Styracosaurus down here, and by the time all those were out, we got to two stars, or around there anyway. Then once you get to two stars, you get uh, some sauropods, which as you can see are heavily relied upon on this island. So I also have Stegosaurus down here, I believe this was the next paddock that I built up. So I have Stegosaurus, which is kind of a limiting dinosaur, but as you, you can see the population is only like 15 and it's maxed out. Except for when it steps a little too far away from another dinosaur. But we've got Stegos, Apatosaurus, and Brachiosaurus down through here. And it took quite a while to actually fill this one out. And let's see... Um, at that point, um, that was when I started adding as many Brachiosaurus and Apatosaurus as I could, basically. As you can see, there's a ton of them. And, um, let's see here. From there, I want to say that probably got us up to three stars. And, you know, you can kind of see, once you have the layout of the island, you can just kind of fit in what you can. The compies are in here. If I if I needed to, I could replace the compies with five Herrerasaurus, but you don't get Herrerasaurus until you're at four stars. So you don't unlock that until pretty late. So I could put two Spinos and five Herrerasaurus in here, or you could have Baryonyx instead of Spino if you wanted. But both of these Spinosauruses are modified, so their rating is really high, which is, between the two of them, they're almost, uh... Actually, I forgot. This one kills two of my Ceratosauruses, so that's why its rating is a bit higher. Um, let's see. 
Um, one thing to note, as you can tell, uh, it's really, I think it looks nice to have everything centrally located here, and I really don't know how else you could do it on this island. But uh, disease is a pain. I think I had probably tied for worst experience with disease on this island, the other one being Nublar North, which is also a pretty sprawled out map. But um, up until I had, I was just short of four stars, and I only had one ranger station. I had two, two jeeps, but only one station. And I was battling rabies for about, probably about an hour. And the, I was battling the rabies so long that by the time I had it under control, another outbreak happened like two minutes later. So um, by that point, I, I, that was when I put in the second ranger station. And I basically had one, one ranger vehicle dedicated to each area of the park because the disease here is r ridiculous. And by the way, <laughs> for some reason, I'm not sure if it's because of the way the carts are, but my Jeep kept getting stuck right here, so I had to manually drive it at least up to here so that it could reach the actual enclosure. But, um, so anyway, that was, that was really frustrating, and that added a lot of play time. Um, in hindsight, uh, yeah, of course, I should have had multiple jeeps, but I was, or multiple ranger stations. I did have two jeeps the whole time, but, um, I was, uh, that was probably tied for the worst challenge mode experience I have had, uh, on this island, the other one being Nublar North. So, um... Anyway, I quite enjoyed this. Uh, I'm on the Jurassic Park era, in case you didn't notice, with the uh, JP era contract givers. Let's see this guy. There we go. Um, so, one, crucial things to take into account are having your teams fire flares when they go in for um, medicating and refilling your feeders because I've I've had the jeeps be destroyed a couple times even when I fired flares of course the one that I named Muldoon is the one that keeps getting blown up which made me kind of sad <laughs> but um, I think we have a dead stego over here um, if you're wondering how to do that by the way I'll give you a quick demonstration. This is a perfect example. We've got an empty feeder and a carnivore exhibit. So we go down to fire flare, shoot the flare, and then resupply. So um, they'll come in and shoot the flare before they do anything else. But um, you know, we're back up to five stars now, even with even though we're down a couple dinosaurs, which is. Uh, which is nice, um, but yeah, that this layout works pretty well. I'm actually, believe it or not, I am a species short. Um, the Spinosauruses are carrying a lot of the weight for us, I think. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, we are 17 out of 18 unique species, so we've got a 155 variety penalty. Um, my best suggestion, I actually even have... I'm not sure if you saw this, but I actually have Metriacanthosaurus in here with all of our sauropods. What I would suggest doing to get rid of that is to put a few compies in here and then put the Herrerasaurus in with the Spinos to get your... That way you're using only uh, quote-unquote safe carnivores that won't try to break out. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get away with using Baryonyx in here as well. Or, you know, you could have three Ceratosaurus and a bunch of Compies. Um, you can, there's multiple combinations. I'm just showing you what I used. Uh, I had lots of people tell me the aviary is not a good choice for cost, and I can tell you that, um... That contract is complete. You, uh, found a way. I, I did not build the aviary, and I had much fewer money problems on this playthrough. You know, if John had listened to me the first go-round, uh, maybe none of us would be here now. So, 
you might want to listen when I say that there is a new contract for you to consider. So yeah, that uh, pretty much sums up the park. Um, like I said, it, you can save a lot of money initially. You don't need... I didn't build fences until I needed to start dividing the enclosures. However, with that being said, it was kind of a pain to have to herd certain dinosaurs into said enclosures when I needed to build them. Um, this is also the island where you start off like with a negative 60k Hammond foundation fee, which is, I'm not sure if that's a glitch and it's not actually that penal, or if it is that bad and it's a glitch or something. So what I suggest is grab all the Dr. Malcolm and Dr. Grant contracts that you can um, and just kind of stay afloat and take your time. You might be a slower start than normal to do it this way, but I actually don't think I was like making an actual profit outside of contracts until I got to one star, come to think of it. <laughs> so um, like I said, I'm not 100% sure about all that. As far as tornadoes go, this is actually kind of surprisingly an easy island for tornadoes. Um, that's only because I don't have any quote-unquote dangerous dinosaurs though, because nothing I have tries to break out during storms. But as you can see, everything is so isolated from each other that chances are a tornado is only going to hit one enclosure. These two are probably the closest together, but um... Yeah. So, um, anyway, I, I hope y'all enjoyed this little tour of 1993 JP-era Isla Sorna.